So good morning, everybody. Good morning, good morning. I am Lisa Goldberg and I am here for denaro.org.au and I'm so excited and thrilled again, as I am every Thursday when I am in someone's kitchen, to be with Laura Gluckman, Thank you, Laura. Um, a wonderful pastry chef from Sydney, Australia, who is giving us all her time and all her effort and all her ingredients for Denera and for all of us to enjoy, which I'm so thankful. And it's my pleasure. It's thank absolutely you. My, and my honour to be able to share all these heritage recipes. Thank with you. Everybody. Thank you. I've just been flicking through um, one of the oldest cookbooks I've ever seen from about 50 years ago with all these beautiful Sephardic recipes. And we'll talk about those during the morning. But I just wanted to say to everybody who's watching, thank you for joining us. And please remember to head to denera.org.au to see what is coming up in Denera. There are some fabulous things. A special shout out to tonight's song butlers. If you missed the last two song butlers, it doesn't matter, but it is an incredible hour of music. Uh, please tune in at 7 p.m. tonight through Denera. It is something else, I promise you. Two weeks ago, I was standing in my kitchen on my own, dancing around the Brilliant. kitchen. It was just so unbelievable. Fun. But on the food front, this time next week, we have the most exciting event. I'll be working with my favourite, Ilan Kudron, again. And we will be having special guest Nikki Curta joining us. And the event is called, wait for it, Mrs. Maisel at the Denera Deli. So Mrs. Maisel, Nikki Curta will be Mrs. Maisel. She'll be doing all her songs. And mm -hmm. I will be creating some things to be part of the Denera Deli. So stay tuned. It's going to be yeah. really fun. And please sign up for that one. They've put the links, Denera's put the links in the chat. And um, you can just click on those and book in now. Uh, just a quick hello oh, to Hillary. Hi from lockdown in Adelaide. Oh, sorry for you, sorry. Adelaide. It's such a shame, but at least you're onto it and hopefully six yeah. days you'll be done. So thanks for joining, Hillary. Lots of love from us. I think we should now get started with the I cooking. We should. Before we start cooking, I'd like Laura to just tell you all a little bit about, when you just tell them, just something about you, where you're from. So I was born in what was Rhodesia, now Zimbabwe, Harare, and uh, growing up in a very close-knit Sephardic community, um, the centre of the house, as always in any Jewish family, was the kitchen. Um, running around as children, running around, grabbing something to eat out in the garden, back in, it was always about the food, as you know. So I had a brilliant upbringing in Zimbabwe with all these fantastic cooks, wonderful women who were willing to share and include even the littlest of children in making all these gorgeous pastries and uh, uh, recipes. Uh, so that's how I grew up and um, took a lot of the recipes with me. Um, and even though most of them are incredibly labor intensive, it's a labor of love. It really is, especially if it comes from your heritage and your background, the Sephardi. Um, our Sephardic heritage is from Spain, uh, Toledo. So. Uh, the language, the Spanish dialect that they speak is Ladino, um, which is wonderful, wonderful language, unfortunately dying out very slowly. Each generation speaks less and less. Um, but for me, the baking and the cooking um, is what I continue with. And that's, that's my legacy to give to my children and hopefully grandchildren. And, and everybody else. And everybody <laughs> else. And everybody else. So um, I've just basically been doing these recipes for my whole life. Um, so for me, it's it's a standard, and for my household, for my family, and for my friends, it's all standard for them to eat all these beautiful things. Um, so it's normal. These are normal foods for me. Aren't they lucky? <laughs> yeah. Um, so here we are, um, uh, having landed in Australia thirty odd years later, and I'm still doing all these beautiful Sephardic pastries, still sharing them, and um, very blessed to do so. Can you just tell them a little bit about your professional training and your working yes. life? So um, I started out just being a normal house, uh, cooking in the house, doing my own thing. Um, then I went into catering and I did uh, cakes and uh, cooking and gradually grew that. And then I decided I wanted to go in a little bit more of a different direction and also train myself properly. So um, I took a couple of years off and uh, went to pastry school, to patisserie school, and learned everything from scratch. Wow. So hence, a lot of my recipes are weight driven um, so that it's more exact because um, baking is a very exact science. Yes. It's all about how all the um, ingredients react with each other. 
Um, a lot of people don't like to do that. They'll rather have cups. Yeah, yeah. Um, which I is think fine. it's so important. To me, that's the number one kitchen thing you need to have a set of digital scales. scales. Yeah. And I can't live without it. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. So, um, so, yeah, so two years of, of pastry school um, and then uh, five odd years thereafter working for uh, um, bakeries um, and caterers and um, now taking a ba break and uh, getting off my feet because it's really is hard, it's work. hard work on your feet, hospitality, um, unfortunately has suffered during Corona, but generally it's on your feet for long, long days and anyone in the hospitality industry will tell you, mm. um, it really is, you have to have a passion for mm. it. Um, so here we are, baking away, cooking Fantastic. away all these beautiful recipes. What are we making? So today we are making burrachita. Yeah. So burrachitas are tiny little pastries um, where you make um, oil-based uh, dough, um, let it rest. Uh, while it's resting, we're going to make the fillings. Today we're doing two particular fillings. We're doing spinach and mixed cheese. And um, if you um, got onto the website early, um, we're making the potato and cheese filling, which Generally, you make the night before because you want the filling to be quite firm. You don't want it to be soft as in warm as it's just because then it's sort of sloppy. Yeah. And it also uh, it affects the pastry as well. If your filling is uh, warm, then it starts uh, uh, cooking the pastry yes. and all the pastry starts to dissolve itself. And then That's it's, the a big mess. Mm. it's a big mess. The beauty of actually an oil pastry and we have as part of the Monday Morning Cooking Club, have been looking for years for a really fantastic oil pastry. We've got one um, in, in a recipe for, um, and they are Safadi actually, um, little pastries, I've forgotten the name, but it's really hard to find. And I've spoken to many chefs over the years about a really excellent oil pastry. And I think this is the one. So really pay attention okay. to this one. I'm excited. So let's get started. Okay, so let's get started. So first up, we're going to make our dough because the dough needs to rest for about five or 10 minutes. So in your, um, we put the scales on and we're just going to do uh, um, one dough. You can, if you're doing both the spinach and the potato, I will double up on the dough. But for now, we're just gonna do one dough. It's quicker and easier for everybody. So in here, we're gonna put 230 grams of iced water. Now I was explaining to Lisa, the iced water basically will absorb, what was it, 230. Uh, uh, 230, yes, 230. Yeah, the ice water absorbs, I'm oh, sorry, <laughs> um, absorbs the flour quicker and then um, the oil helps it release. And if you don't have such precise scales, it's 230 mils of water. It's yes, the same. mils and grams are pretty yeah. much in water. Yeah, yeah, in water. So we also 210 grams of oil. I use rice bran, you can use any. Uh, um, flavorless oil. Yeah. Honestly. So you're not going to use your extra virgin olive oil no. for this. Um, you, you know, I like grapeseed. You like rice bran. You could use a sunflower, safflower vegetable, yes. whatever you like to use. Just so long as it's flavorless. So 210 grams of oil. Perfect. <laughs> 10. Okay. Then we do a teaspoon of salt. Okay. Forgive me, but I do know what a teaspoon. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and um, a teaspoon of freshly squeezed lemon juice. She knows her teaspoons, obviously. <laughs> okay, so we take a fork, give it a good mix. So we've just got water, oil, salt, and lemon juice in That's a bowl at the moment, in a big yeah. bowl. In a big bowl. Um, and you're just gonna mix it until the um, salts dissolve and everything comes together. That's about it. And then I've pre-measured um, the 550 grams of flour. So you're going to pour that in slowly and just mix. Can they see me on top of the bowl? Yeah. So just, it doesn't look like much to start off with, but use a fork. You don't need to use your fingers or a wooden spoon or anything like that. A fork is good. Can everybody see that? Very see? simple. Yeah. Yeah, really so simple. This is 550 grams of flour. Why don't you put that down, my life? It's a bit scratchy on the ears with the fork. Oh, yes. Sorry. <laughs> That's all right. Okay. You know, in the Monday Morning Cooking Club Kitchen, I don't let anybody mix 
with a fork or a knife in a metal bowl because oh, I can't, yes, it, it does something to me. Works. This is okay, just, yes. just on the border of okay. Okay, me. so this is what it looks like just looks before lovely. you get stuck in. Um, this is plain flour. Is plain it? Yeah, flour. it's plain flour. Plain flour. Sandra, thank you for the question. Yes. It is plain flour. Yes. Now it's an incredibly soft dough. I'll just show it here, lift it yeah, up and show it. I will show the dough. Very easy, very, very comes very together easy. beautifully. Yeah, it really does. Mm. Can you use spelt flour? I haven't tried spelt before, but I don't see why not. Um, okay, um, Andrew has asked, can you use a Kenwood whisk? Um, no, I would prefer it if you didn't because you don't want to um, over mix this. A thing. dough hook at a pinch, you could use a dough hook, do you think? In a pinch you could, but this is it. That is it. That is yeah. all you do to this dough. You don't want to over mix it. You don't want to encourage the gluten. Um, so, no, strand. do it by hand. And you yeah. can see, it, do it with a fork. It literally took 30 seconds. So, just... and I'm all one for, I'm one for all the machines. So don't get me wrong, but this one, I think fork and hand is really so yeah. easy. And, and it's quick. So it's not like you yeah. have to mix and mix and mix and mix. Okay, so um, we've got a tray with some baking paper on it. Yeah, and then all we're going to do is, for the spinach ones, obviously, we're going to do um, larger balls. Um, and for the um, potato and cheese ones... Can I have a go? Yes, please. So yes, this is really can... what I call a walnut size, isn't yes. it? And you know what? Oh, if you do them the wrong size, it doesn't matter because when you're rolling out... You can always easy. doesn't matter. You can always take off when you're rolling up. This is just basically to get them into it, and you don't even have to. Did roll you that squish one. them around a bit in your hand first, or bit, not really? A just bit, a little bit. A little bit. Have some overthinking it. Okay, <laughs> we're going to just do pinch off a little bit at a time. Walnut size. It's a bit oily, which is lovely, and then just onto the bench. Yeah. So the reason we let it rest is we want some of the oil that's in here to be released which makes the dough easier to roll um, when it's ready. Um, and also for the gluten in the, uh, in the flour to relax a little bit. And that's why I said better not to mix it in a machine because that way you don't um, yeah. tighten it. It's, it's not tight because you want the dough to be quite elastic when you roll it out. And I'll show you when we get to the rolling out stage because you want it quite thin. So it's almost like making your own uh, filo pastry. You want to roll it out as thinly as possible in order to get it nice and crispy. Um, okay, from Carol, is the yes. oil the same in grams and mils? No, I don't think so because oil is heavier than water. Yes, so um, the oil here, I've got 210 grams, which is basically a cup. Yeah. So if you prefer to use cups, one cup of oil to three cups um, of uh, uh, flour and one cup of water as well. So the oil and the water even though they're one cup each, it's slightly different weights because of the density of each. Beautiful, done. That's it. So now we're going to leave these just on the side here. We'll cover them um, so they don't dry out. There we go, beautiful. Thank you so much. Okay, so um, the night before, boil your potatoes, peel them, mash them, Throw in the cheese, the egg, the salt, and the pepper. Okay, Put let's just go back a step. Okay, yes. oh, so potatoes. Tell me which potatoes so, you use. I use regular white potatoes. The washed ones or washed. the dirty ones? No, no, no. The no, washed no. ones, yeah. You must use washed. I mean, if you want to buy dirty ones, then you it's an extra time just to scrub. Yeah. So plain white potatoes, a kilo of those. You boil that up, peel them. While they're still hot, you can throw in uh, two cups of mixed cheese. No. Sorry, you're boiling. Sorry, I just no, 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 no. so you are boiling them with the skin on. I that's how I do. Yeah, some people, don't. Some people will even microwave them. Yeah, that's fine. Whatever. So boil. You. Let's follow Laura. Start way. cold yeah. water, potatoes in cold water. Yeah, bring it up to the boil, let it boil, hit it with a skewer. If it goes straight through, no problem. What, maybe ready. 40 minutes or something if yeah, they're hot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then that. okay, then peel them while they're warm. Yeah, well, with gloves on, yeah, yeah. Um, and then peel them while they're warm, put them in a bowl, yeah. mash. Then you can throw in your three cups of mixed cheeses. So basically, I use the traditional, um, it's called a kapalachiri, which is like ah, saganaki, yeah. the Greek cheese, which is quite, it's a, yes, it's a um, goat's milk cheese. Okay. 
that one. Can you repeat the name? Cafalo Cherry. Cafalo Cherry. Or Cafalo Gravieri. Sometimes in the delis they call that. It's a Saganaki. So, yeah, pretty much. Yeah. It's a goat's cheese. Um, so I do a mixture of that. I do a bit of parmesan. You can put tasty in it. Whatever cheeses you want is absolutely fine. Um, uh, except mozzarella, sorry. Except mozzarella, you don't want you don't the want stringy. The stringy. Yeah. Okay. You don't want the stringiness. So you put your mashed potatoes, still quite warm. It doesn't matter because the cheese will melt in and that's fine too. Yeah. Put the cheese in, give it a mix. Whip up two eggs, throw that in. The eggs basically help it puff up when it's within the pastry. So it gives it a lovely puffy look. Um, salt and pepper, mix, and into the fridge. So you want it and this nice is hot. It. This yes, is yes. it. So it's quite a hard mixture. Um, mm -hmm. Taste. Please do. I'm just tasting on your behalf. <laughs> I want you to know that I'm doing this for you, not for me, okay? Just want to see what it tastes like. Are we lucky? Does it need more? Mm, it's delicious. Cheesy potato. Che it's cheesy potato, cheesy but it's potato. smooth and lovely, yeah. and I like it a lot. Okay, so that we did the night Sick. before. We keep it. Yeah, just throw it in, Mama. Yeah, we did the night before. Then we get to the spinach part of things. So, okay, let's talk spinach. Spinach. So, growing up, English spinach looked like this. English spinach. English spinach, where I was born in in Rhodesia, Zimbabwe. I came here and I said to uh, um, Lisa, English spinach, put that on the recipe, not realizing that it's exactly the same thing, but here it's called silver beet. Ah, okay. Silver yeah. beet. I'm not sure what it's called in the US. Yeah. Or um, can. So it's. And silver. our English spinach is a smooth, big yes, leaf leaf. thing. Yes. Yeah, it's a different thing altogether. Yeah. Um, someone says, can you use feta if you can't find that cheese that I can't pronounce? Um, Kefala cherry. Um, no, rather use uh, hard cheeses. The soft cheeses we're going to put in the spinach, the, the, the feta we're going to put in the spinach mix. Could you use halloumi? Is halloumi similar yeah, actually, to that? Yeah, you could use yeah. halloumi. Yeah. Yes, you could use halloumi. Sorry, I'm putting it you with the spinach. <laughs> okay. okay, so this is the um, silver beet spinach, whatever you want to call it, yes. wherever you are. Yes. What is it called in the States? It would be good to know that, yeah, actually. That would be nice. Americans, yeah. can you please help? What do you call this? Okay, let's okay. go. So you cut away from with scissors, I find it's always easiest. And you've washed and it first because it's oh no, 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 no you no, haven't. No, you we have haven't not washed, washed it first. So we take out that horrible big fat stem. Um, and I've done some before here. Just wanted to show you. I'll show you again one more time. So you cut a Swiss shard. shard. Yes, you could use shard as well. Oh hi yes. Sandra, nice to see you here. Sandra actually is, if it is the same Sandra, is in our new book. Now for oh, there Hi, you Sandra. Go. Okay. Okay, so you've got lots of big fat pieces like this. Um, then how we do it is we'll take the whole thing, we put them on top of each other like that, and we roll into a nice little fat swift roll like that. And that's how you will be able to get finely chopped like that. Just grab the knife. Okay. Fingers, nails uh, and fingers tucked in. Beautiful. I'm silent because I'm mesmerized. Not much makes me silent, but honestly, watching Laura slice so beautifully okay. it's very clever that you just roll four sides of the silver beet together to make this beautiful yeah. chiffonade we chiffonade. might call it yes. beautiful there you go. as finely as you can you can see yeah very nice yeah. and that's it so you can call that chiffonade or you can just call that shredded spinach yes some people do it in uh, a food processor but it's just quicker and yeah. easier and I think it would damage the leaves a bit more to put yeah. in the food processor. It would chop them yeah, finely yeah. instead of And they would go a bit them. mushy. Yeah. Yeah, I love this. So, it's yeah. beautiful. So we do that. And, and then, then you, you wash it. Yeah. So then you wash it all and you lay it out on um, paper towel. Um, and then you dry it as much as you possibly can. Obviously, you want as much 
of the yeah. so Ellie no Laura didn't wash it till it was already shredded why yes. is that why you can wash it before but I find that with the leaves them being so curly they hold on to some dirt or some yeah it's insects true. or whatever That's true once they're chopped you can really give it a good shake soak it in water I mean I suppose you could soak it whole but for, yeah. for so me, this easier. is easier, yeah. much easier. But just make sure you do dry it well. Yeah. Yes. That's important. Very. Okay, so pop it straight Would into Would you use the white part in a soup or something, do you think? Um, you... you could use it in a consomme. I don't know about a soup. Maybe just like to add flavour for a vegetable consomme. Sorry, I've missed all over here. But it's... Yeah. No judging. These people don't judge me. Okay. It's all good. It's all okay, good. so now we're going to put into this mixture... We are going to put our two cups of mixed cheeses. So I've got here the grated cappella cherry. I've got a little bit of parmesan. Um, I've got oh. the feta. Oh, so now we have feta. Um, Paula, yes. you wanted to use feta. Now's your feta chance. Yes, now's your feta chance. And you just crumble it in. Crumble in how those look in here. So. Can I open? Yes, Can I please do. They look ready. They look gorgeous. Oh, okay. You want to take them out? Yeah. Do you think they're ready? Yes. I mean, you can have a look. Yeah, they're definitely ready. You can pop them out. Okay. Um, so you at the bottom. Beautiful. There we go. So you put in. How did you know I was wearing purple today? Ah, oh, matchy matchy. Perfect. All right. So we put our cheese in. Then we also want to put in a bit of flour. Put them here. I don't want to spoil oh, okay. Don't look. Don't look. We're going to put also a tablespoon of flour. Salt and pepper. Now, the also party ladies were big fans of white pepper. They found it sweeter. Don't ask me, but that's what I go with. A bit of white pepper. But if you want to go with uh, ground uh, uh, dark pepper, pepper, that's fine too. Right. Mandy, Mandy has asked, um, how many bunches of uh, silver beet was that? Generally, it's a three or four. Three or four. Three it's or a four. lot. It's a lot. Because it does, we all know, it shrinks down. Yes. You know, when you cook it in a pot and there's this much spinach and it, it goes shrinks to down to this much. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. Right. Let's clear the decks here. Okay, so we've got right. um, two eggs going in. Eggs. So you're not putting all this cheese in, or you? No, 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 no. We've got it. We've got about two cups. Oh, I see. You made the two cups. Yeah. Okay. Okay. We throw the eggs in. That's in. And the spinach is weighed just, Mandy, just to answer you. So yes. it's 500 grams of spinach in this yes. bowl. So you need to see how big your spinach bunches are where you buy your spinach yeah. and wait wait when you weigh them remember you're going to be taking out the center store now don't forget this is also baking it's not cooking so you can go by taste if you want to if you want more cheese yeah. then go for it absolutely don't be shy um i think um, i'd always no i was gonna say i think i'd always go more cheese because i love cheese but i love cheese too but you also spinach want, is also nice yeah, yeah. so you want a, a sort of a balance this recipe gives you a good balance but if you want more cheese, go more cheese. It smells delicious. It smells very good. So don't forget to taste um, for uh, seasoning. Season, yeah. It's very important. Mm. And also don't forget that the cheese is quite salty, especially the feta. So don't put too much salt in. Mm. That's good. She nailed it first go. <laughs> don't you love that? All right, can I move these away? That would be lovely, yes. Let me just give my hands a quick rinse. Yeah. Okay. So while we were doing that, of course, our pastry was resting. And that is a good few minutes. Now, as a pastry chef, I would, because it's in my nature, apportion out all these into little balls so that I have equal amount of uh, spinach to uh, pastry. But because we're doing a mixture of both now, we'll, we'll forget that part. Okay, so we get our little pastry and we just work with one ball at a time. So how long does it need to rest? 
five to ten minutes. Okay. I mean, and if it's longer, longer, that's fine too. I mean, I made pastry earlier. Um, I actually just want to show you here. That please ask any questions if yeah. you go. I'm happy to answer. Uh, I don't know if you can see here, the pastry itself releases a fair amount of oil. I can see that. Yeah. So it's sitting in a tiny, tiny puddle of oil. Oh, tiny. So you will see that. That if you have a feel. Oh, and it's very soft. Yeah. And then this one's still a little bit firmer. Yeah. That's then, still softer than it was. Yes. Still yes. much softer than it was. Yeah. Okay. That's good to so, know. Yeah. So now we start the whole rolling process, the whole making the actual pastries. Now, so let me just take that. Get your tray ready. Um, just with some baking paper. Um, line it. Just, just like line that. it. Just like that. Doesn't have to be exact because you're going to put your pastries on. Okay. Now the big, all important question is yes, you can freeze. They freeze brilliantly for up to three months. Absolutely raw or cooked. Some, there's one school of thought where you two thirds cook them and then freeze them. There's one school of thought, freeze them raw. Doesn't matter, you cook, you bake them straight from the freezer. The freezer. The Love freezer. that. Yeah. Love now that. I've given you measurements um, how to make each size. Um, we're actually going to start with the potato ones. Um, but I've made for the spinach triangle shapes. If you can't master that, it's not a big deal. We'll make pillow shapes much easier. And that's okay too. Um, and you will be able to tell the difference in, in terms of what you've made because the potato are like a sausage and then the spinach will be triangle or pillow. So don't worry. Oh, I won't see what's what in the freezer. I promise you will. All right. So we flatten it slightly. Baby rolling pin. Anybody got kids? Plato sets. Fantastic. Get these all from Great pastry idea. shops. Great idea. And there's no flour on the bench. No. She's not flouring yes. the bench with oil pastry. You don't need it. You really don't. Yeah. Okay. So we want to try the whole point now is to roll it out as thinly as we possibly can into can you see how thin that is? It is very thin. So that's where we are. We take a tablespoon of the mixture. And we make, can you see? Yeah. Everybody can see, beautiful. Okay. So it's across the long way. If you yes. say it's a rectangle, it's, a, it's across the long, long side. side. Yes. But not okay. all the way to the yes. edges. Now we're going to take very gently and fold the two sides over. Just like that. Everybody got it? Okay, so the two outsides is, ends in, just to cover the end bits, okay? Then we take the side closest to you, fold it over, and then roll. Beautiful. Okay, so Beautiful. you end up with a little sausage like that. Beautiful. Okay, now the traditional way to do it is to move it into a half moon. So we move it into a half moon shape. I'll just put it on the tray, and that's what it looks like. Okay, so Miss Lisa, away we go. Can I use which one? Yes, yeah. yes, yes, okay. yes, right. yes. Tell me what I'm doing wrong. No, you tell see, me, tell me. It's so, so, so easy. easy to roll. So Goodness easy to me. Roll. It is so easy to roll. Yeah. Happy with that? Yeah. 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 That's, that's it, that's it, that's it. Beautiful, that's it. Done. Okay, now we take a tablespoon. Everybody watching, I'm paying attention. <laughs> Sausage, beautiful, lovely. It takes all your nerve not to lick your fingers off the potato. No. <laughs> I'm not going to do that. This is the most beautiful dough to work with. I, I, I just can't tell you. Like that? How easy is that? It's really easy. Now, um, for Akita number one, and I'm going to do the yeah. traditional. Seam side down, seam side down, down, and onto the tray. Oh, that is just wonderful. How easy is that? I love it. It's really easy. And it's a pleasure to work with. And, and how good that it's a dough that you make in 30 seconds in a bowl with a fork, and it's dairy free, 
Well, not the cheese part, but it Sorry, I'm talking about dough. the pastry, yeah. yeah. And, and you can actually fill it with meat filling and, and yeah. you know, that's very good yes. for a lot they, of people And there are well. meat fillings for burrachitos. There are meat fillings. There's aubergine filling, yeah. eggplant filling. There's also um, pumpkin filling as well. Anybody wants any of those recipes, uh, 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 send us a message and I will forward them only with pleasure. Thank you. Recipes. So let's show another one. Let's see another one by the master. Okay. Um, could you use the dough for pierogin? Absolutely, Estelle, 100%. Yes. That's exactly what I was thinking. Yes. We've got a great pierogin recipe um, where you cook the meat in a lot of it's a, it's a it's a very liquid mixture that you start with yes. the meat and you cook like it down soup. and it's beautiful yeah. to a beautiful dry mixture which goes so would go so well in this pastry absolutely okay it's just a pleasure to watch and it's incredible how it does not stick at all no. at all at all okay could you make it with gluten-free flour now that i haven't tried but i don't see why not I don't see why not. You may have to, um, I know with gluten-free flour, you may have to add a bit of xanthan gum. Um, that basically um, mimics the, the gluten in regular plain flour. So you may have to add that. Um, that's something that perhaps you'd have to test out. Um, but give it a go, because you don't have to add baking powder or anything like that to it. Beautiful. Okay. So, yes. You see, it doesn't have to be exact rectangular shape. Yeah. Shit. That's a nice way of saying that my shape is not good, okay? <laughs> I'll let that go. <laughs> okay. okay. The, the, the dough is unbelievable to work with. It's really, really beautiful and soft. And elastic. soft. And you just can't muck it up. You really, you really can't. Well, you can in the beginning stages if you don't follow the measurements. Honestly, uh, yeah. if you try and adjust the measurements, you will end up with either the right Well done. Very beautiful. Proud. Okay. Beautiful. I'm going to be a burrito maker now. Somebody's asked, can we? Can you please share the, uh, Shana said, can you share the aubergine filling? Definitely. Um, yes. Maybe we'll post it. I will. Um, we'll I send will. it to Denaira and we'll post yes. it on the video. Yes. With the aubergine and the pumpkin filling, you do have to render them down. You do have to cook them down because you want to get rid of as much water as possible. Same with the spinach. You want to get rid of as much water. Then the next step, let's bring this tray up here, okay, is... Just before freezing or baking, you just literally give a light brush of an egg wash, which is one egg whipped up. You can add water, a tablespoon of water, sorry, a teaspoon of water mm. if you want, but you don't have to. What I do, I, I do the same. I do add a little bit of water, but I find that we often use more egg whites in our house than egg yolks. So I have egg yolks in a jar for, yes. you know, and I just use an egg yolk with yes. water when I need an Beautiful. egg wash without wasting another egg. Beautiful. So okay. it's a good use. Yeah. And then a little sprinkling. Oh, Lorraine says, want to see mine. Yes, I wish yes, you could show us a photo. Send a photo. I don't think you can post I a photo think, in the chat. No, I think it's a shame, really. Text me a photo, Law. I have to see them. I'm so happy you're cooking along. It's great. Oh, look at that. Here cheese on top. Cheese on what? So what cheese have you put on top? So now this is the cavallo cherry oh, cheese. Yes, yep. Yeah. But you can use uh, uh, parmesan, parmesan on top, whatever. Yeah. Just grated. Beautiful. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to put these aside now because we are going to do the spinach oh. ones. So you just basically, with your pastry, with your pastry, you keep going until it's all finished. If generally, I end up with more potato filling, um, so I eat it. <laughs> <laughs> well, you could make a lovely something. Something. You I mean, could. if you, yeah. if I mean, you ended up with spinach and with potato, you could mix them together and make like, a lovely bake. Yeah, that, that would be really mm. good actually. Mm. <laughs> Well, you could roast some vegetables and then put that on top and make like a vegetarian Anything. shepherd's pie yes. sort of thing. Beautiful, mm. beautiful, beautiful. Okay, Yum. so now we're going to head on to the uh, spinach ones, which require the bigger pieces of dough because you need a little mm. bit more. The, spin the, the filling is a little bit thicker. Um, Andrea says, I used to find spinach in South Africa was so sandy. It was so time consuming to really get the sand out. Is it the same here? No. No, ours is a bit sandy. Uh, yeah, but that's... That's why when you chop it, uh, this, it releases yeah, it the sand, sand and then you put in a collar, you put in a big bowl of water, more sand at the bottom. And then uh, I yeah. wash it, uh, I wash it about two or three times. Yeah. Um, so but yes. it's worth it. Yeah, it's we do have it. the sand problem, but yeah. you need to get it out. Yeah. So now with the spinach ones, I know we're moving ahead past potato ones, but I think everybody's got the gist of how easy the potato ones really are. It's just a little 
flip over the side, flip over and roll. Okay, so now we're going to do the spinach ones, which are almost like um, uh, what we've called, the pastries are called Rijaldi's. So we use Rijaldi's, we use phyllo pastry. So you want a, a nice long oblong of phyllo pastry. Um, so this is pretty much the same thing. So we are rolling it out. Oof, don't worry about it. It'll be okay. I'm sensing this is a little more complicated than the potato nope. rolling. No, no. Uh, just longer, just longer. Okay. So you're going to take um, some of the spinach and try and get it into a ball if you can. Somebody's asked, uh, I shouldn't say somebody, Lois has asked, does yes. the uncooked spinach release a lot of water? Um, not if you've dried it properly. Um, because when you are baking, the pastry will absorb some absorb some of the liquid um, and uh, so will heat up the oven. So I think we're okay there. I think we're okay. So we've rolled it out. We've put a ball on the top left-hand corner. Then take our pastry, lift it very gently and fold it over. Don't worry if this holds. Okay, so we've encased the pastry at the end there. So now, as you do with the triangle, you go bottom corner to top, top corner to bottom, bottom corner to top, oops, top corner to bottom, and we have a little triangle. Wow. It's actually a triangle. cross between a pillow and a triangle. It's yes, very well, that's fussy it. and lovely. Yes, it's so hard. And if you've got any open spaces, squeeze them shut. Really not a big deal. You can, if you want, if you're obsessed with the triangle shape, move it in with your fingers. All right, please show us again. Do we need yes. to show again? I think so. Yes. I don't yeah, think I'm going I to show you a yet. few times. Yeah. A few times. It takes a while to master, but it's okay. Everyone tastes exactly the same, no matter what its shape. Um, Sandra says it's a samosa. Very similar. And the pastry, I think if you fried the pastry, it would probably be almost the same, except it doesn't have the spices in the pastry. Speaking of spices in the pastry, um, uh, there is a recipe that you put cheese in the pastry. Mm. I've not tried that wow. because I like the traditional, but um, there is a recipe with cheese in the pastry. Is it Americans who make cheddar pastry with cheddar cheese in it for apple pie? It rings a bell yes. somewhere, but yes. I can't think of who does yes. that. Okay, so if you take another one. Okay, oh, no. let's watch carefully. So you're putting it to the side, to the front side yeah. of, the, of the rectangle. And then we fold the bottom up, gently, be very gently, gentle with the pastry and over, okay? Then bottom to top, top to bottom, over. So bottom to top, top to bottom, bottom to So when top. you say bottom to top, you're going bottom from one side to to top on, on the, the other, other side. side yeah okay it is it does take a while and then you can see here i even have a little hole there don't worry pastry is very forgiving there's another hole the letter but remember if this rolling freaks you out you can just make the other shape okay, i know it's so not yes. traditional but you can do but the other shape do that. so now i'm going to show you the the pillow shape approximately one. what size is the pastry once rolled Okay. Yeah. Um, uh, I actually put it on the recipe. Oh, uh, okay. Um, I, I can't access access. I'm gonna right guess up. like eight centimeters by. Mm -hmm. Well, let's do it again. Yeah. What do you? We'll do it again. Yeah. We'll see if we can work that out. So a lovely long rectangle. Yes. Very straight sides. You're doing a very good job. <laughs> Practice. <laughs> oh, so I think maybe like six. No, no. Ten. Ten by fifteen. No, 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 no. So we're about twenty-five ish by ten ish. So you really don't have to be too exact. That's in centimeters. Yes. So if you are in um, the United States, you can just Google it. Yes, <laughs> we don't do that. We're, we're metric. We're off with okay. the time. Okay. So we fold. Oh no, we're doing the potato. Oh, right. I forgot we were doing the potato. Oh, no. Let's do one more. No, I'd like to. I'd like to try one of these. Okay. And see if I can. I can work it out. We got time so yet. We got. Bottom left to the top. Top left to the bottom. Bottom left to the top. Top left to the bottom. Bottom left to the top. Little holes. Don't worry about it. 
want a triangle shape. Oh, wait. And Fantastic. the nice thing about the spinach filling is with the potato, uh, if you overfill it, it they'll burst, but it still tastes the same, they'll burst. With the spinach filling, it doesn't really burst because the spinach shrinks. So you're all good to go, my dear. All yours. Okay, so let's see. I should take bets on whether I can. I'll see, I've already ruined the dough. Because it doesn't matter what you can do, Mama. Okay, Timor. Okay, let's see. Is anyone at home doing this with us? I'd like to, to hear from Anybody? you if you are. Yeah. Also, can I do a little bit of a shout out while you're Please do. Yes. Yeah. So I work for uh, the Montefiore organization in um, Sydney, um, and I am based at the Willara campus. So a shout out to all the beautiful ladies and gents, the residents at the Willara cam campus. Hello, everybody. Um, thank you to Anne for bringing this to everybody's attention. She's, she told them that she knew someone famous who'd been <laughs> on a cooking show. So Anne, thanks to you. And more so to the wonderful staff there, beautiful, to the wonderful staff at Monte Willara who go above and beyond and um, who I am in awe of. Um, and uh, who are a, a dream to work for. Sending love. Okay. Okay, so here we are. Okay, gently look. That's a... Oh, don't worry, don't worry, don't worry. You can't see. Okay, so, so someone says, I am struggling with the folding. Can you do it slowly, please? Well, so am I, but you know what? With practice, we will master this, exactly. okay? We will all master it together. But I will show you the pillow. So I am going over. And all the way and along. all the way along, and we're not worrying about the holes yeah. because we're folding it exactly. over. Exactly, you don't have to worry. Okay, okay. so, so we're now bottom going left, our bottom left, left to, to the, the top. top, right? Top left to the bottom. Okay, don't worry if it's sticking out now because you've got more pastry. Bottom left to the top, top left to the bottom. Bottom left to the top. Can you can you feel the concentration? <laughs> So tense here. To the top. Beautiful. And look, I have to say, it looked like I did a very bad job, but right. you know what, Laura, it's right. It's actually not so hard after all. It, and it's a very forgiving pastry. I'm quite proud of that. Well done. So whoever was struggling, whose name I can't see because you come up with an ID, um, please don't struggle. Please try again because if I can do it first go, you can do it first go. One more turn, okay. and then we'll do pillows. All right, no, I think you can do it. I'd like everyone to follow you doing it rather okay. than me. All right, so we do a long rectangle. And you don't have to rush. This is not a rushy thing. This is a lovely thing if you want to watch one of the very many series that you're watching. That's right, have the TV on TV and do this. That's a great idea. idea. Honestly, yeah. if you don't want to rush this, if you rush the pastry, you'll tear it without a shadow of a doubt. Which is possibly what I did. Perhaps I was like, you know, in a hurry to get it folded. Okay, let's see. And I also didn't squeeze. I didn't squeeze my mind. The you squeeze? Did. It just it, brings it together. That's it, yeah. The squeeze just brings it together. Very it's, gentle fingers. There's no rush. And don't worry if it tears. Let's see, my tall. So, bottom left to the top, top left to the bottom. See, and it's tearing, so don't worry, don't panic. Bottom left to the top, top left to the bottom, and finish up the end. Now you can see a little bit of hole there and a little bit sticking out there. Oops, don't worry, we tuck it in. And this pastry is just marvelous. It is beautiful, pliable, malleable, magnificent. And we've done a beautiful little triangle. Oh, there's a piece of stuff sticking out there. Fantastic. There you go. Away okay, go. so is everyone up to the rolling? Everyone's happy? Do you Everybody's need another happy. another show I'm happy by to Laura? Do it again. Let us know if you need it done again, yeah. otherwise we'll move on. To pillows. Um and remember once you practice, like anything, you'll you'll nail it. Absolutely, you really will. And you can go back and watch the video anytime in the future through right. Denera and watch. And again. you'll see from your first one when you start your pastry to your last one. By the time you reach, because this makes about 35-ish, by the time you reach 30, they'll be done, Pat. You're a master. Okay. Okay, so now we're going to do the pillow one, which is very similar to the uh, cheese one, the cheese and potato one. Um, so we make almost like a 
more of a square than we do a rectangle because we wanted that pillow squarish shape. So where we go, and like we did with um, the potato and cheese one, we put it at the top closest to you. It looks like your top, but it's actually closest to you. Okay. We fold over the sides. Simi will answer your question in a minute. It's a very good one, but let's focus okay. on this for a sec. On the side. So you just, there, can you see it's almost closed in there? Take the pastry closest to you and one and two. A pillow. It's much easier. I, I, I will admit much easier. Um, and it's like a little rectangle shape. So it's just a fatter version of the yes. rolled one. Yes, of the the, the cheese potato yeah. one. But uh, and cheese... you roll it the different in a different direction. Yes. Yeah. But it's the same concept. The sides go over, flip from the uh, from closest to you away, um, and then roll. Okay. The question um, from yes. Simi is: yes. as a par of pastry, that means as a non-dairy pastry, is it possible to use it for an open tart? No, because it shrinks terribly. Okay. Oh, it shrinks. Sorry. So, yeah. Um, there are a number of, of uh, power of tart bases that you can use with margarine. Now, actually, Lisa and I were talking about margarine earlier mm -hmm. and making pastry with margarine. The thing with margarine is it's almost 50% water or it's a high percentage of, of water. So what I normally do is I will melt the margarine in the microwave. So it's liquid, it must be liquid. And then you just let it sit either on the bench or in a cool place, not in the fridge. Um, and you will see that the solid, the fats will uh, solidify and all that's left the way the water you can pour out. And that what you're left with is better to use in pastry than a, a, a scoop of margarine. Yeah. Because then there's less water in the pastry, less reason for it to shrink mm. uh, and or go out of shape and be too soft. Mm. I think that's the problem with uh, power of uh, pastries is they're just very soft. Yeah. Okay, so sides over, front, moving, and forcing, and roll. Beautiful. Oh, sorry. Beautiful. There we go. Want to go? Sure. <laughs> she says nervously. <laughs> Just on, that power of, just on that power of pastry issue, yes. um, it, it's an issue for a lot of people finding a really good pastry that's power of, and we've struggled with it at Monday Morning Cooking Club for a long time. And we have a recipe for barekas in our third book. It's always about the food. And the recipe actually came to us with margarine. It's a rough puff pastry, mm -hmm. which means it's got like a, you make a dough and it's got a layer of margarine that you smear over and then fold it and put it in the fridge. Mm -hmm. And it's very, very good. It's actually, it's not quite the same as with butter, but it's pretty close. And I made some sausage rolls with that, with using margarine, and they were really great. And I'm going to do that for Denera one of these days, because I think it's a recipe that should be shared. Uh, you know, a, a sausage roll for people that don't want meat and milk together. Because yes, yes. who doesn't love a sausage roll, right? Who does I don't know. Do you love a sausage roll? I love sausage rolls. Yeah, I love it. It's a very Aussie thing. Very. So we're doing a squarish. Is that okay? Yes. So it's more a rectangle than a square, I know. It's okay. Okay, and we're taking this bit and I'm going to squeeze it, like you did, or bring it together. Is that too much? That's okay. <laughs> Actually, it is a little, it bit. Is a little bit. Sorry. That's all right. I, I tend to overfill my things, which is you think is being generous, but it actually doesn't work because then in the oven they yeah, all explode. They just they do. Explode. And I'm going to bring but two sides. So up. As I said, the spinach doesn't explode. Okay, yes, two sides. One, two. Okay, it's the side closest to you. Block over, don't worry. And roll. Yours look much better. Okay. Roll, 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 roll. Pull that bit out. And also, as I said, forgiving pastry. Forgetting. Okay, all right. But you are the master and I am just learning. So there's my little imperfect but lovely pillow. It's beautiful. I love it. It's okay, beautiful. that's great. So do you sprinkle anything on top of the spinach oh, ones? Yes, you do. You can do cheese as well. 
You can do sesame if you feel like it. Oh, that'd be nice. Yeah, let's do it. It's not traditional, but... So what would be traditional cheese? Traditional would be cheese, but sesame is fine. But you do have to brush them with the egg. Yeah, see, so I've got spinach everywhere, all over my fingers. I'm trying to get this bit out. What does it matter? I just want them to when be perfect. <laughs> Well, that's the nice thing about baking is it doesn't, I mean, cooking, it yes. doesn't have to be perfect. Yep. It the, really is. The funny story of the day is that Laura baked um, some of these ahead, what, when, a couple of weeks ago, and put them in the freezer knowing that it would be busy this morning getting ready and she wanted a cooked batch for us to show you. And her lovely family didn't realise that they were for today and they had eaten them when she went to the freezer to get them out this morning. <laughs> but they weren't there. They were not. There. So she's been really busy. So she's been really busy. So thank you for doing that. I don't that. need the Okay, so we'll do half and half so that you can see what they look like. Be generous with the cheese because it does melt once you pop it in the oven. Okay, so at this stage, Beautiful. this is where you freeze. If you're doing them raw, if you take, if you want them raw in your freezer, this is where you freeze. You take the whole tray as is, freeze them. Uncovered is fine. The minute they are rock star solid, and I'll show you. Oh, no, I can't. Um, too far deep in my, my freezer and I can't get it. But they are rock solid. Literally, you could knock someone out with them because they are so hard. And that's when you can pile them into a container and freeze them and take them out at your will. And you literally cook from frozen. It's Fantastic. the best thing. Um, but if you're doing two thirds, pop them in the oven now till they get a, a semi-golden color, just like a soft tinge of gold. And then you take them out, pull Pour them, freeze. And then you've only got like 10 minutes left mm -hmm. when you recook. So it depends how your timing goes, how you like to do it. I do, I freeze from raw um, myself. That's just a personal thing. Okay, so let's have a look at the baked ones and let's talk about how long. So that was going to go into a hot oven now. A 170 oven for around 40 ish minutes. Um, okay, so that again, it's 170 fan cost and 185, 190 in a regular oven. Yes. But you've got to know your oven. It, to me, that's yes. a slightly under what I would use for most things, that temperature. Yes. Normally, it's 180. Yep. Um, but I found with 180, they were tending to burn in Australia. Um, okay, so now so, we just need to show you the finished ones. Yeah. Um, Shall we get a lovely plate to put them on? Sure. sure. Um, and while Laura's getting the plate, I just want to remind everybody that tonight at 7 o'clock, you have Song Butler's. Please register and sign in. It's a beautiful hour of music that you'll enjoy, whether you're on your own or with a crowd. And then next Thursday at 11 a.m., I'm going to be back with Ilan, Ilan Kidron in my kitchen and the amazing Mrs. Turner for Mrs. Maisel at the Denera Deli, which will be fun and oh, delicious so and uh, something I don't think you'll want to miss because we'll be having fun, so hopefully you will have fun as well. So Laura is just getting together a beautiful plate um, of... All these gorgeous borokitas, they really are fantastic. Okay. We're very lucky to have Laura show us this today. Oh, they look absolutely. I'm just going to take it close up because yes. it just is beautiful. See, I think everybody is going to be very, very, very jealous that I am here and you're not, <laughs> and I get to eat them. And I'm sorry, but you need to go make it yourself absolutely. now. Absolutely, you can be eating and these those in two that hours. Are, I hope you continue to roll and stuff and rolls up. As you can see, once once we finish here, I've got a lot more work to do, but that's okay. That's okay. Thank you, thank you. Firstly, thank you to you, oh, Laura. It's my pleasure. It's my really, absolute pleasure. Really, from the bottom of the Denera so heart, happy. thank you for being part of this. I love it. I really and do, and I'm so grateful. Thank, thank you, you to all of you for tuning in again. It's great to have you with us. And if you do make them, please post on social media. If you're on Facebook, um, tag Denera Project or on um, Instagram, Denera underscore people. Please tag because we love to see what you've made. So happy cooking to all. And I think it's time for us to go and eat.